Good morning, everyone. In today's class, we will learn another literary term, affective fallacy. Okay, let's get started the class. So, affective fallacy is of two components. One is affective, and another is fallacy. First of all, we have to know the meaning of both the terms separately. Affective is relating to mood, feelings, and attitudes. Okay, and fallacy, on the other hand, is error, misconception, a mistaken belief, misbelief, delusion, or false notion. Okay, so affective fallacy is a term from literary criticism used to refer to the supposed error of judging and judging or evaluating a text on the basis of its emotional effects on a reader as we have already discussed affective is relating to moods and feelings and fallacy is error or misconception here also in wikipedia it is written that it is a kind of error of judging or evaluating a text on the basis of the emotional effect on a reader. The emotional effect may be due to the personal intimacy between the author and the reader, may be due to the reader's natural inclination towards the subject that the writer is writing. Okay, so if the reader is highly inclined towards the subject that the, that the writer is writing, then he will be judging that particular text in a different way, in a biased manner. And here the fault, here the error will occur. Okay, due to the mood, due to the feeling, due to the attitude towards something, the judgment becomes bias. And as a bias, uh, as, a, as a result of this bias, the fallacy occurs. I think you have understood what effective fallacy is. Okay, so effective fallacy was a literary term which was coined by W. K. Wimsett and Monroe C. Beardsley in 1946. After understanding what is the meaning of effective fallacy, you have to remember who coined the term because it is one of the most important questions in all the exams, whether it is MPhil entrance, MA entrance, PhD entrance, or NET, SLED, etc. Okay, who coined the term and when? Okay, Wimsett and Monroe defined it as the error of evaluating a poem by its effects, especially its emotional effects upon the reader. Same as Wikipedia. Uh, I think you have understood it. Just you have to remember it. Who said this and how? As a result of this fallacy, that is, as a result of this error, the poem itself, as an object of specially critical judgment, tends to disappear. So that criticism ends in impressionism and relativism. Here you have to remember that the poem itself gets lost. That is the originality of the poem. That is the charm of the poem is lost due to such kind of fallacy, due to such kind of errors. Because uh, the poem is an object of specially critical judgment. The poem is specially is an object of uh, judging properly. But if we cannot judge it properly, if we attribute something negative or attribute something which is not in that poem then it tends to disappear that is its originality its charm its meaning tends to disappear okay and it is due to the ways one is impressionism and another is relativism you have to understand these two terms as well because these are some tools, uh, these are some tools uh, for judging a poem, for judging a literary work, 
uh, through which we can get the subjective analysis, not the objective one. By impressionism, it means that a literary or artistic style. What is impressionism then? It is a literary or artistic style that seeks to capture a feeling or experience rather than to achieve accurate depiction. That is the critics who use impressionistic point of view to analyze a poem. Always pay attention to the feeling or experience, not to the real depiction of the poem. He also only pays attention to what he feels. He only pays attention to what he experiences regarding this poem. Okay, regarding the poem he is analyzing. So, when someone is using impressionistic point of view to analyze a poem, then there is a high chance of effective fallacy. High chance of errors okay because it is a subjective one he is analyzing it in a different way and another will also analyze it in a different way because it is not objective at all okay so impressionism is one of the causes behind effective fallacy another relativism it is also one of the causes behind effective fallacy because in relativism it is believed that knowledge, truth and morality exist in relation to culture, society or historical context. They are not absolute one. Okay, they believe that everything is relative. Everything is uh, not permanent. Okay? The knowledge, the truth, the morality, these are not permanent things. These are relative in relation to the culture, society and historical context. So, it const constantly keeps on changing. Okay? So, using such kind of tool of relativism also may lead the uh, the uh, formation of the creation of effective fallacy because they are not judging uh, the poems or the work of art in an uh, objective manner because if the po a poem is judged uh, from a point of view uh, which is relevant to the 17th century and if someone is again trying to analyze the poem in 18th century, it will become something different because the situation will be different. Okay? So, in relativism, uh, therefore, we can find the change of meaning again and again. The meaning changes along with time. The meaning change with uh, the condition. The meaning changes with historical context so these two uh, ways are responsible for a high effective fallacy okay so effective fallacy occurs during the analysis of the poem using impressionism and relativism as I have already told you impressionism and relativism are two things which are completely different from objective criticism so some of the critics then came out with new ideas to reduce the effective fallacy. One of them was objective criticism, in which critics focuses on the features, devices, and the form of the work, which are resisting, which are uh, which are not changing time to time. Okay. Uh, in objective criticism, the features are discussed, the devices, the literary devices that are used in the poem are discussed, the form is discussed. Okay, features means the characteristics, the characteristics will remain same, whether it is 17th century or 18th century or 19th century. 
if someone is writing a poem someone wrote a poem in 17th century and if i am judging that poem using the objective criticism then the features will be the same the devices again the devices will be also be same whether he is using uh, these these literary devices or not literary devices the poetic meter uh, rhyme scheme uh, uh, alliteration these things are called literary devices whether he is using it or not okay it will remain same whether it is 18th century 19th century or 20th century it will not change time uh, along with time and another is form in objective criticism one one is one one thing uh, is important that is form whether it is an elegy whether it is a ballad whether it is an uh, a kind of uh, epic or what okay so using the objective criticism we can reduce the effective fallacy because in objective criticism there is no place for the mood for the uh, for the experiences of the reader for the personal intimacy of the reader and the writer okay after that another criticism came out to reduce the effective fallacy this is called reader response criticism in 1970s reader response criticism here the reader is given the most importance okay at most importance that is uh, the reader will judge the literary work without having the personal intimacy with the writer without having the biography of the writer without having the background of the poem okay without having the historical background of the poem without having the uh, personal experiences with that particular text in reader response criticism therefore needs close reading of the text to find out the inner meaning of the text not the text which are uh, not the meaning which is influenced by other emotional and uh, other uh, other such uh, kind of what we say mm, components or elements so by not paying attention to mood or feeling the reader is trying to analyze trying to give some feedback on the kind on the literary work this is called reader response criticism okay but experience is important here experience here does not mean the experience of the reader along with the text or with the text with the writer with the biography of the writer it is the experience of a literary work experience on the literary work experience on the genre whether he or she knows about the genre or not about poetry or not if he or she has experience if the reader has the experience of the form of literary art then and then he will be able to uh, judge it properly i think you have understood what uh, effective fallacy is what is the relationship between effective fallacy and impressionism is effective fallacy and relativism is effective uh, fallacy and objective criticism is effective fallacy and reader response criticism is so i think uh, everything is clear i'm not claiming that all i have given is uh, uh, all i have given is the ultimate one you have to read a lot to get the meaning more okay for today thank you